Hi. Hi. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Good. Sorry it's so hot up here, but thank you for coming over. Thanks for having me. Yes. You and I have often talked about the differences between people that we've come into this business being inspired by and yes. some of the people we've also encountered along the way um, who are trying to break into the business. and the generalization of a certain generation for being entitled or maybe not having as big of a work ethic. That's yes. obviously not true of you at all. So how big of a role do you think hunger, passion, and drive play in our business or the journey into it? I think it's extremely important to have a big hunger and to be hungry for new things. I think as soon as you lose your hunger, I think you stop growing a bit. Absolutely. I think it's important to be open to new things, look at new things, and yeah, have a hunger for what's out there and what's new and... A curiosity. Exactly, a curiosity and to always push yourself to get better. I think having a passion for things is also very important because I think it shows very much in your work. You were just saying that you get so afraid when you feel like you've lost inspiration. I think it's something sometimes I can get a little scared of and I think you have to have those moments. What sort of practices go into the day-to-day -day of maintaining that creative flow for you? When you get stuck and you don't know where necessarily to find it, I think like for me to step away and go and look at something else and just, because inspiration comes from everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, look into art, look into like different, different ways, keep looking for inspiration nonstop. All inspiration is good inspiration, right? Absolutely. Well, we also talked about that because obviously there's a little bit of a, a strategy trap, I guess you could call it, in, in the industry today, just in terms of being so informed about what does well, what doesn't do well, the yeah. instant feedback. And that oftentimes derails people's sort of organic approach. Yeah. And I think that sort of stepping away that you're talking about is that place where you find the kind of freedom, I guess. I think so. And I think, you know, like everyone, it's good to have a strategy, mm -hmm. I think, from the beginning, to mm -hmm. have as a base. But I think the industry moves really fast. I think now in social media, this new climate, or not the new climate, but this like, you know, you have information feeding you nonstop. And I think everything moves quite quickly. You have to like be ready to move away from your, you know, you have a strategy, but it's important that you're open for it to change. You have to remain agile. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We talked also about how in the age of social media, there's often the impression that you can just break into this business without any sort of process or lead up or kind of taking the appropriate steps. And you spent a significant amount of time assisting with Carl Templer. How important do you think that process is when coming into the industry? I think it's extremely important. And I think the culture now, I think a lot of people, they think that they can you know, jump that step and become stylist. I mean, nowadays, anyone can become a stylist. It's not like it used to be when you were an editor in a magazine. It's important to you know, learn from the people that know, that know the business. And you just don't learn about like, you know, sending requests, but learning how to communicate your ideas, mm -hmm. learning how to be on set, learning how to um, work in teams and Carl taught me everything and I that was my school and I think you know people don't become people you don't book a carpenter that hasn't gone to school would you ever aspire to be an editor-in-chief of a publication did you ever kind of dream about being in-house at a publication no I think I like the freedom because I find it very inspiring to work with different people like different clients and work with different brands and consult so no not really I'm quite restless so I feel like I need to like jump around well I guess in a way it's almost linear as well right because yeah. you're going from one to the next it's not like you're pinballing in between all three at the same time yeah and something else that not necessarily every stylist cares as much about is casting for you casting is a very big thing you're very passionate about casting I think it is really big. The brand, you show the new collection, that's kind of when you show like the spirit for the season and what you want to say with it. And I think it becomes a huge part of how you bring that to life. Bring that to life. It's very character based for you, right? Yeah. I feel like a lot of the times when you're shooting editorial, I feel like you're always looking to pair up the character that's so clear in your mind with someone that accurately kind of represents that. Yeah, I think what girl you choose, it's very important to bring out your idea. Mm -hmm. If you change the casting, it like the whole the whole story can take a different turn. I turned to go mostly for character. Mm -hmm. I like to collaborate with the girls as well. You made mention of being able to have a conversation with someone. Are you someone that gravitates more towards a little bit of an older girl, or do you kind of not necessarily discriminate in that way? 
I wouldn't describe it in that way because like I could work I can work with a 22 year old or 24 year old that mm -hmm. I don't can't have a conversation with mm -hmm. and I can work with an 18 year old that I have a really great conversation with and was casting very important for you from the get yes is that something you feel like you inherited through the Carl process or was it just kind of innate? a lot from him what kind of girl you shoot like you pick for a certain story mm -hmm. he taught me a lot about that like you know like like, you know, with photography, you pair up with your idea because that's how you start, you know, when you create I was just a story. Say, so that's another thing that I'd love to talk about. So for you, what does that process look like? Is it idea, then you sort of choose which photographer would be best the same way you cast a model or is it them bringing the story to you? Or? It depends what kind of story it is and it happens both ways, to be honest. Sometimes a photographer approached you about an idea they have and sometimes, you know, you, we come back from Fashion Week and you get inspired by the shows and you start pulling images and references and then you choose the photographer that you think will bring that to life and then then the collaboration starts you know like you start sending like reference pictures back and forth you start discussing the model the location sometimes it happens it comes from the clothing idea and the you put the reference into it and sometimes it comes from just a fashion idea you know we had talked actually about the alexander mcqueen documentary yes the fact that he never compromised and he was just himself I feel like it feels it felt it, it always felt very real and he touched I mean you couldn't go to my queen show without getting walk away without getting touched and be very emotional do you think there was a benefit to not being as aware as designers are today with all of the instant feedback there was a little bit hundred percent yeah. I think nowadays people are too aware of things I think social media is something that can be really lovely and like you know be a big inspiration of like a big source of inspiration but it also can be really poisoning. It's easy to start comparing yourself. You see this feed and it's like, you know, everyone is doing this and that. It can feel quite like challenging as well. Well, that's why I wanted to that. talk about the value of apathy. You yes. know, because I think there are certain moments, you know, being in your teenage bedroom and listening to, I don't know, Smashing Pumpkins or something and feeling, you know, somewhat apathetic to anything outside of what you were interested in that moment. And, and while I think some people associate apathy with a negativity or a numbness or some sort of darkness, it, it can be incredibly liberating. And I think that it's important to find moments of that in your life, especially as a creative person, to create space for that genuine process and not necessarily be so affected or react to, uh, reactionary to what it is you're looking at you know, on an Instagram or whatever it might be. I do think that's really important. I think it's important you take that time and let yourself have that feeling and go and do that. And I think a lot of times after you have that, that's when like, you start to reflect and you start to think about what do I want to say in this business? What do I want to bring? And that's a lot of times, a lot of the ideas comes after you've had one of those moments. Of course. Well, you're responding to self-inquiry rather than an external kind of statement. Exactly. Question. That's when it becomes, that's when you do the best, your best work. And again, I mean, it's funny because we're not really necessarily reinventing the wheel with this conversation. conversation. The reality is, is everybody agrees that the arrival of social media has introduced an awareness that's quite inhibiting in other areas just because you're no longer imagining against an open sky you're imagining against a very sort of clear set of what appears to be defined parameters and it kind of feels a little bit limiting sometimes yeah i struggle with that quite a bit do you think that it's a fair statement to say that the majority of very creative people in our business have a healthy amount of insecurity or self-inquiry always happening yeah i think so being insecure probably makes you push yourself as well. Of course. It's very easy to get lost mm -hmm. in this industry in general and like to forget about what you want to say and why you like fashion sometimes and what you, why, why you like what you do. A lot of times I have to step away mm -hmm. to look at it and like come back and think about why I do this and how I can twist things and make it mine. You lived in New York for... 11 years. 11 years. And what keeps you here? Why do you choose this to be your base? Because I assisted here for six years. You know, you start your relationships and you create your family with mm -hmm. friends. It just became like, this is where I am. And do you think you're going to stay here for a while longer? I guess we will see. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.